Last video, I went through the process of doing curve sketching. In this video, I'm going to do two more examples. I won't show a lot of detail in the calculation for the sake of time, but instead I'll focus on the process of making the sketch. The first function I want to sketch is f of x equals x e to the negative x squared. The exponential is defined everywhere, so the domain here is all of the real numbers. The range, as usual, is uncertain at the start. The function is continuous, which I get for free since this isn't a piecewise function. For the intercepts, I evaluated x equals 0 to find that 0, 0 is the y-intercept. If I solve for the x-intercept, setting the function equal to 0, I find that there are no others, so 0, 0 is in fact the only intercept. The function is defined everywhere, so symmetry is possible. If I put negative x into the function, the exponential piece with x squared is the same, but the x out front becomes negative x, and therefore the function on negative x is the negative of the whole function, and that's the definition of odd symmetry. So the negative part of the function is a rotational match around the origin for the positive half. There is no periodicity here. There are no finite limits to check since there are no breaks in the domain. The limit at infinity is zero since the exponential decays much faster than the linear function grows, and the same is true for negative infinity. This means that y equals zero is a horizontal asymptote in both directions, and it has to be in both directions as well to match the odd symmetry I just mentioned. Then I can look at the derivative. This is a product rule derivative with this result. So I set that derivative equal to zero and I solve. The exponential part factors out, and so I solve one minus two x squared equals zero, which has solutions x equals plus or minus one over root two. The domain is all real numbers, so I split it up into three intervals. I test the derivative on each interval using the points negative two, zero, and two. I put those three points into the derivative, which is at the top of the slide here. The result is negative for two and negative two, and positive for zero. Therefore, the function is decreasing on the first and third intervals, and increasing on the middle one. That means there is a minimum at x equals negative one over root two, and a maximum at x equals one over positive root two. Well, then I'll do the second derivative. The process is the same, but the functions involved do become a bit more complicated. I differentiate the first derivative again to get the second derivative, and it's a complicated product rule, and I've only showed the, the results here. I set this equal to zero and solve, again not showing the calculation, and I get three possible inflection points, zero and plus or minus the root of three over two. There are three points, and the domain is still all reals, so I get four intervals. I test the second derivative on these four intervals, choosing negative two, negative one, one, and two, Putting those four into the second derivatives gives values that are negative, positive, negative, and then positive. So all three points have change of concavity, which means that they are all inflection points. And the concavity is down, then up, then down, and then up. With all of this, I can draw the function. There is an intercept at zero, zero, so there's a point there. The function starts at the horizontal asymptote to negative infinity and is decreasing and it goes down until x over x equals negative one of root two, and then it increases to x equals one of root two, and then it decreases again. And finally, I can match the concavities. Concave down until negative root three over two, then concave up, then concave down, and then concave up again. Finally, this does have the desired odd symmetry. The negative part is a rotation, rotational mirror of the positive part. And I can also roughly judge the range. I don't know the exact y values, but the function is bounded between its minimum and its maximum. And all this together gives me a pretty good idea of the behavior of the function after processing all of this information. Here's the second example for the video. This is a polynomial, so the domain is all reals again. This is a quartic with positive first component, so I expect an upward opening usual w shape of a quartic. That means the range will be bounded below and unbounded above. The function is continuous, which I get for free since it is not piecewise. There is no symmetry. If I put negative one into the function, or negative x into the function rather, the result is neither the same function nor negative one times the whole function. If I set x equals to zero, the value is 10. So zero, 10 is the y-intercept. If I try to solve f of x equals zero, then I have to solve a quartic. This is in general pretty difficult. 
So I asked a computer for these roots, and they are all approximate, but the values are close to negative 21, negative 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and 13. These are the four x-intercepts. There are no finite limits to consider, and the limit at plus or minus infinity is infinity in both directions due to the positive x to the 4. This means that there are no vertical or horizontal asymptotes. Well, then I move on to the first derivative. Here's that derivative, and I've calculated its roots, which are 0, 9, and negative 15. The domain is all reals, so it splits up into four intervals. I test the derivative on all the intervals, testing at negative 16, negative 1, 1, and 10. Putting those values into the derivative gives values that are negative, positive, negative, and then positive. The calculations here are a fair bit of arithmetic, but that's not our problem, and you can always ask a computer for help if you wish. This means that the function is decreasing, increasing, decreasing, and then increasing on these intervals. There are two minima at negative 15 at 0, and a maximum at x equals 0. Minima at negative 15 and 9, rather. Then I do the same for the second derivative. The second derivative is now a quadratic and has roots of 5 and negative 9. This means that the domain splits into three intervals. I test the second derivative at negative 10, 0, and 6. I get results which are positive, negative, and positive. So this is concave up, concave down, and then concave up again. Both points, 5 and negative 9, are inflection points. Now I can draw this. I first label the four intercepts. Though on this picture, the two at negative two and negative 0 0.2 and positive 0 0.2 are so close together that it's hard to see the difference. The others were approximately at negative 21 and 13. I know the function goes to infinity past both outside intercepts. Then I have a minimum below x equals negative 15 and x equals nine and a maximum at zero. And finally, I can label negative nine and five at the inflection points. It starts concave up, then goes concave down, and then goes concave up again.